Hello, everybody, and welcome to our uh, live studio show here on MXGPTV.com with me, Paul Malin. It's round 16 of the FI Motocross World Championship with the MXGP of Finland, and we are at Hvinka. <laughs> I just spoke to the security guard a moment ago. That's how he said you pronounce it, Hvinka. So now we're good. We've had so many different uh, variations. Anyway, coming up on the studio show today, we have Maxim Renault from Monster Energy Yamaha Factory MXGP. Uh, and then for the first time ever, we've got twins, Jeremy Van Horbeek and his twin brother, Jeremy Van Horbeek. He's doing part two and part three. But before we go anywhere, Lisa Leyland, here we are in the middle of our three in a row. Yep. Are you excited to, be t excited to be back in Finland? I, it's my first time here. I, it's my first time. You in never Finland. came last I've time. Never, I've never been here before. Wow. I know. I'm pleasantly surprised. So, are you excited to be in Finland? I am. <laughs> I'm very <laughs> excited to be here. Thanks for asking, Paul. Yeah, no worries. Well, look. On that note, then. <laughs> Should we get on with it? <laughs> yeah, let's, let's, let's do that. <laughs> All right, look, uh, joining us now, our first guest, uh, Maxim Renault, uh, the reigning MX2 world champion, but of course he's riding in MXGP at the moment, uh, GP. Uh, Maxim, great to see you. Um, first of all, how are you feeling after that crash in race two uh, a week ago in Sweden? Yeah, uh, I feel great, actually. Uh, yeah, it was a really big crash and uh, quite of a scary one for me. But uh, hopefully I could get, uh, get away uh, good with just some bruises on the elbow. So I'm fine. I'm ready to race today. And obviously it's your rookie season in MXGP. Overall, have you been sort of generally quite pleased with how you've performed um, in that first season? Yeah, in general, it has been a good season. You know, I've uh, shown my speed. I've shown my capacity to win races, win, uh, win GP. So, so, yeah, it was a good season for a rookie. For sure, I'm a little bit disappointed, you know, with uh, the injury I ha I've got uh, in uh, Touch and Tal, you know. Um, yeah, that's not something you want. And, uh, and also, it a little bit backed me up on the championship. So, I would have liked to have a full season, really, like, flowy, like last year, I would say. But, uh, but yeah, it's a rookie season. I'm learning and uh, I'm still quite pleased. Okay. Well, you won your first qualifying race in England. You then got your first race win round three in Argentina. Were you perhaps surprised that those wins came so early? I would say that, yeah, we, we got ready for that. You know, like uh, I came into the 450 after the 250 season. I didn't took so much break, actually. I did almost straight away back on, onto the 450 to start to get ready because my goal was to be in f up front straight away. And then, yeah, first moto ever in, uh, in MXGP was a qualifying race in Matali, straight away win. Uh, then Argentina race, uh, race one win, fighting with Team all the moto. So it was really, really confidence bo confidence boost you know like straight away battling with the best you know so mm -hmm. so that was good and then yeah we just kept on rolling got uh, a gp win in spain so that was uh, yeah that was amazing we've seen a lot of riders i guess struggle from mx2 then going into the mx gp class but but not you that's not the case why have you adapted so quickly i would say that the 450 is a bike that i know quite well because i was riding with it since i'm uh, 14 15 years old you know so mm -hmm. i was quite a big uh, yeah, I'm not a big, big guy, but I was quite big early when I was 14, 15. So that could uh, help me to jump on that bike and already get some, uh, some, yeah, some ride with it. I did some French uh, sand, uh, sand races uh, with the 450 or so. So I, I knew already that bike and I knew that it was, it was fitting my style, you know, mm. suiting my style. So, so that w that's what helped, I think. Mm. Well, you got your first Grand Prix win in Spain. Uh, you didn't only win it, you did it with a 1-1 as well. Um, I guess... Surprise that you went 1-1 or not really? I mean, was that the kind of result that you were expecting even from the first round in, the, in Matali? I was expecting to, I mean, expecting nothing. I wanted to win. Yeah. I wanted to go for race wins. I wanted to go for GP wins. Uh, and that's still my goal, you know. And, uh, and uh, I, I don't go out on track, you know, for n nothing else than winning. Mm. So, so, yeah, I was expecting it. But then, yeah, you never know how it, how, how it can go, you know. And in Spain, everything went well. I had two pretty good starts not whole shot quiet but good starts and then uh, yeah just uh, rode m a good pace no mistakes and and won both motos so yeah. i know i knew in spain i liked the track but yeah between liking the track and doing one one it's uh, a big gap or so huh? yeah. yeah well actually it was your mom's birthday when you picked up that win and um, what a great gift for her great present but i've actually heard that she would prefer the foxhole short black plate is that the case <laughs> yeah actually actually when i got the gp win with one one uh, she was like okay that's fine uh, no problem we I, i'll take that but uh <laughs> but yeah she she really wants that black plate and uh, i'm working for it i almost yeah. got it last week in uh in uh sweden but uh still 
still quite not. It looks like uh, that black plate don't want me, but uh, <laughs> but yeah, I'm definitely going to try to get that one uh, this weekend and uh, try to offer her because I'm a little bit late on the yeah. birthday now. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> and obviously, uh, and actually, you've only what had two uh, Fox Hole shots, I think, in, in MX2. Yeah, so nothing in MXGP yet. I'm not the king of the hole shots, you know. Like uh, I would not say that. For example, uh, we know who is the king of the hole shot. It's uh, Jorge, and uh, I'm definitely not. But I'm working on it, and now we're getting better and better. So, so yeah, we, we try to work as best as possible with the team, uh, working on myself, on the bike, on the consistency, and that's going to really help if we can uh, get some, some whole shots more often to win GPs. Mm. What was the feeling as you came over the line? Obviously, you won the first race, and then you won the second one to back it up with that win. Uh, how was the feeling immediately after that? Uh, it was an amazing feeling, you know, like I... I on the moment, you don't really realize, you know, but then, yeah, jumping on the podium and uh, realizing you're a winner for the second time in Spain, back-to-back -back win uh, for MX2 also, was just amazing. And, yeah, it was just like, we got that, you know. Those trophies are heavy as well, aren't they? They're <laughs> really heavy. Like, when I when I lifted it, I was like, for those who know, I lifted with one hand and I was like, you see, I, I, I showed my, yeah, I showed I was really happy and, and yeah, like, excited about it. So. Yeah. Well, in Sweden, uh, a Yamaha 1, 2 and 3 from the same team, um, that's the first time that's happened in MXGP, actually, yeah. isn't it? And, and um, probably in 30 years. In 30 years. Um, what was the atmosphere in the team after after this race? Yeah, everyone was uh, feeling great, you know, feeling amazing. The the team boss, I think, was uh, over the moon. It was uh, for sure amazing to to see so much blue in front and also with such a nice gear. Actually, it was looking yeah. so good with the, the the blue gear like that. So yeah, it was just a, a team race and uh, and we we all rode really well. I wish we could have the second moto the same, but uh, unfortunately, we know what happened and. Uh, and yeah, it was just it was just great to be out there with my teammates and uh, leading the pack. All right, uh, before we disappear, new track for you this weekend here in Finland. Uh, we have had a 85 and 65 European Championship, but you weren't here back in 2014 when we had that. So, what are your first impressions, and how you think the the track will will ride? I think that first of all, this weekend we have a lot of class. We have uh, three extra class than the yeah. World Championship, so that's going to develop the track faster, even faster, and more bumps. The track looks a little bit uh, more heavy than I would expect, you know. So I think it's going to be a really rough track, and uh, and yeah, I think uh, it's going to be again the challenge for all the guys of the paddock to stop that uh, Dutch uh, Dutch podium like Lommel, you know, because yeah. it's looking kind of a Dutch track. So yeah, we're going to try to to ride as best as possible and uh, and feel good on this track. All right, and uh, just before we go, Motocross Nations at the end of September, still no announcement on Team France. But if you go, if you are selected, can we get a red bud to this camera here? For sure. Red Bud! <laughs> <laughs> cool. Maxim, thanks for joining us. Have a good weekend and uh, all the best for the rest of the season. Thank you. Thank you. All right, our next guest is getting ready to come and see us, but before we meet Jeremy Van Horbeek, here's some highlights from uh, MXGP, uh, MX2 Race 2 from Sweden. Who will it be that grabs that all-important Fox Hole shot as we charge down the straight... Kevin Hawkmo with another flying start, closes down Tom Bial immediately. Then Kearns goes round the outside, and it looked like Langenfelder with the foxhole shot this time around for the seventh time this season, and he leads going into turn two. Beniston there in uh, second place now as he goes past the number 24. So Thibaut Beniston, a flying start for him. We saw him on the pace in the final laps of uh, race one. It's favouring that inside line through the corner that he made the mistake in race one. Goes to the outside of Anna Mostyk. Does he get on the power early? Yes, he does. And Vial makes a move on Kevin Horgmo. Moves up into third place. Jago Kitz gets the better of Kevin Hawkmo up the hill and into fourth position. All of a sudden, this race coming alive. Dude. Oh, and Beniston goes down. Oh, another mistake. Exactly there. the same scenario. There and Vial's down. Wow. Chasing the front end. It gets away from him. The Red Bull KTM down and uh, Kitz goes through. Kitz still desperate to find his way past the German. 
we are getting to the point where we are really believing that this is a crucial moment in the Grand Prix because uh, here it goes by and takes over the lead. That's going to be three points and he does just that. He knows he can't afford to hang around. He goes around the outside of Langenfelder, takes the lead on lap 11. All of a sudden there's a five point gap in this race alone between him and Vial. Tom Vial now will come back to the inside here. Will he go from third to second? Yes, he does. Easy as that. 1.1 seconds as they head into the final lap. Despite the late charge from Tom Vial, Jago Kitt wins race two. He wins the Grand Prix here in Sweden. Tom Vial crosses the line second, and it's as you were at the top of MX2. 23 points between the top two. Hello everybody, welcome back to our live studio show here on MXGPTV.com with me, Paul Malin and Lisa Leyland, where our second guest is joining us now, Jeremy Van Horbeek from uh, Beta SDM Corsa MX team. Uh, Jeremy, good to see you. Um, and obviously, what we're going to do here, just for those who know, Jeremy's going to be on twice. This part is just going to be talking about his season, and then part three, we're going to do a bit of a, a career catch-up. So, because Jeremy just recently announced that he's going to be retiring from racing. But let's focus on the now. Yes. Uh, Jeremy, good to see you. Second Thank year. You with uh, BTS DM course learning year last year with the new bike how was the off season in terms of you know improving the bike and, and the development for 2022 yeah um, nice to be here thanks a yep. lot for having me <laughs> yeah it's been uh, okay you know um, for my side I, I wanted to go a bit faster but it's not that easy you know with the covid situation and then like material running late and so i wish i wish we could go faster like and also in the beta factory they wish it but um you know for riding it's it's okay you know i'm 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 happy but you always want more so uh, as as you can see we're struggling with the start and then we can not really figure it out uh, so you know this is the only the only thing that that we're missing like uh, in the developing uh, side that that we don't arrive to do a really good starts at the moment and uh, but uh, yeah what you want it's like uh, a new bike since uh, one and a half year um, let's say and uh, you cannot just come in mxgp and, uh, and run the world so it's it's <laughs> so it's, it's i guess it's normal so obviously one of the biggest changes this year was you had a new teammate and he was italian alessandro yes. lupino fortunately he got hurt early in the season but during that off season how instrumental how important was he to the development program you know uh, alongside you with your knowledge from one year him being an italian mm. and being able to maybe uh you know yeah well you know he, he was much closer to the to the office in uh, in italy so like uh, for testing wise it was more easy like uh, they could uh, play like quicker yeah. because with me being in belgium and then with the family it was not always so easy to to travel and then so it, it was like uh, important that Alessandro could do like a lot more testing than than me, but unfortunately he got hurt and um, he's still struggling with health. So um, you know, health is like the main thing. So I guess uh, it's 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 really important for him. So, but it's a bummer because um, I t I have to do it on my own now. But like it's not so easy, and it's always more easy with two and. Uh, and especially because he's living close to yeah. there and, and it could go more quick. Yeah. But, um, yeah, it is what it is. And, um, you know, yes. like I say, health is uh, the main thing. And uh, it, it's really important he got 100% again and that he can enjoy okay. next year again. Yeah. Ninth and eighth overall in I England and Italy. So that pretty solid start to the season. Was that what you were hoping for? Yeah, like uh, I wish I could go closer to the top five, but um, it's not really easy because today you really need the starts, and uh, you know we I don't have them at the moment. So, but uh, 
most of the time I'm running like between yeah eight and ten and like really yeah. close to it and um, it's nice it's it's good like uh, you know uh, what I'm doing and uh, at my age and everything you know it's it's really nice to still run uh, top ten but uh, I think that uh, with the physical um, that with like how I'm prepared now yeah. that I can do better mm. like okay. uh, so. But uh, yeah, you know, it's uh, it's it's been uh, really nice and um, yeah, I enjoy it. Well, here, Argentina <laughs> round three. Originally, I know you weren't meant to be going, but seventh, seventh for sixth overall. You then left that weekend fifth in the standing. So yeah, worth it. Yeah, it's definitely. Yeah, it costs a lot of money to go there. But <laughs> I know. Anyway, I it, know. it's not a like uh, you you have to invest in yourself and. Um, yeah. I love motocross, uh, like it's 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 my life, and uh, like being there and, and and having good results, like uh, it's really awesome. And um, yeah, I, I guess um, yeah, it was a good day and an awesome day, yeah. and uh, I had fun. And that track is uh, a good track to me. Yeah. I love that place. And um, well, you got a podium on your uh, privateer Honda as well, yeah, there, didn't you? Yeah. So, yeah. And uh, I enjoyed um, the the fans and every and the, the country. So it's really sure. nice to be there. Uh, France at uh, Erne. Obviously, you've had plenty of top ten finishes uh, this year as well. Probably your best season on the on the beta. Uh, you've got a, a six in race one here in, in France, and obviously that was your best finish. Uh, for a development bike, that's that's pretty good, isn't it? Yeah, especially yeah. in the mixed GP. Yeah, it's it's really good. And um, that day I struggled bad time, so I had a good result, but I. The feeling was off, off, off all day. But because of conditions. Yeah, the conditions, but also like I could not f uh, find a good setup because we don't have so much things to play uh, to play around with the bike and um, like. Uh, but it was a good day actually, and then uh, like to do this with with uh, with with uh, the bike uh, that is still in the second year is is awesome and. I'm pretty sure that they are uh, really stoked in the in yeah, the factory yeah. and um, if they are happy, I'm happy. So. Yeah then it's okay. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, don't forget, the Monster Energy FIM Motocross of Nations is less than two months away. So why not treat yourself to the Monster Energy FIM Motocross of Nations TV pass, support your team and enjoy three days of live content, which includes the Riders Parade, qualifying races, the B final and all three Motocross of Nations main event races. So go to mxgptv.com for more information info but uh jeremy while we're on the subject of the nations why don't you ask belgium fans to come and support team belgium at red bird <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, okay i, I should do it in english yeah or? whatever no, you no, want no, you have to say red bird okay. <laughs> red bird let's come over <laughs> um just uh look we're almost out of time on this segment in fact we're probably a couple of seconds over uh what is the goal for the next three rounds now just to have fun yeah, I want to enjoy uh, the last uh, GPs of my career. And uh, but to be honest, like I struggled with the illness, like uh, in in uh, after Lockett and uh, Lomol. But now I'm feeling good again, and I I hope I can do like just one yeah. exception. Okay. Like that's the main goal. But I for the rest, you know, just have fun and uh, stay stay safe. All right. Well, look, we wish you all the best for the next three rounds. Thank this you. one included. <laughs> uh, we'll be back with Jeremy in a couple of moments, and we're going to talk about some of his career highlights. In fact, here's one or two of them right now. So welcome back to our final part on our studio show, where we are with Jeremy Van Horbeek, who's just recently announced his retirement. So uh, we're going to take a trip down memory lane with him. Uh, but we're going to start at the beginning. And obviously, we are limited for time. But um, let's give this one a shot. Yeah. Jeremy, um, just real quickly, a, a brief history. How old were you when you had your first bike and your first race? Hi, I was young. I uh, was like, let's say... Uh Three, four years I had like a four-wheeler and then a WP50 and uh, from there on you know just uh, riding uh, every day I could and um, my first race I don't really remember because uh, I was like not really into racing I just uh, was like on the parking uh, spots when my father used to race and just riding around uh, the cars and um, so I don't really remember but um, it got it got serious like around the age of 10 you know every weekend we went to the amateur federation and uh, 
like from there on you know like european championship uh, italy france uh, so yeah um so yeah it was and when did you first realize that this is what you wanted to do you wanted to be a professional motocross racer uh since the beginning since the first day i i, I wanted to do uh, like uh, because i my father was a racer, and uh, then I saw on TV all those stars, and I, I said to myself, I, you know, you're really young, but I say, oh, this would be cool to be on TV and uh, and, and race big bikes. And so um, it kind of went pretty fast that I wanted to, to, do, to be a professional rider. And, um, yeah, from there on, you know, you just ride and ride and ride and ride. And, hmm, yeah. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Uh, your first year in MX2 was 2007. You finished 16th overall. What do you remember about your first GP? The first GP was in Namur uh, in Belgium, and I broke my wrist second moto. So it was not like... The first moto was good. I had four points. Uh, but the second one, we, we had like a yellow flag situation, and uh, somebody jumped on my wrist, and I broke it. And I say, oh, tough one. But uh, then, uh, you know, you have winter time and the first full season after. And uh, it was, yes, kind of nervous, new, and, and, and just tried to move forward. And it was more difficult than I expected. Mm. But then, you know, suddenly, you know, as, as the days go by and the, it, it just clicks. And, um, yeah, you just enjoy and you work harder and, and you keep going. And, yeah, that's it. Well, here, 2007, at the end of the year, you were selected for the Motocross of Nations yeah. at Bud's Creek. You podiumed. <laughs> Tell us about that experience for you. Uh, for me, it was really a nervous day. Uh, I was so young and, um, you know, I was like uh, picked uh, because of, of an injury. And, uh, you know, I was a rookie, rookie, like rookie in MX2 MX and uh, rookie in, uh, in the Motocross of Nations. And... America is uh, like another world. Like it's not like Europe. It's another world. And um, I broke an engine also that day. Like uh, so, I was like crying. But, oh, I messed up for the team. And uh, so, but it was just an awesome day. And to be on the podium, like the first time in my life, was was just wonderful. Like um, you know, you you do you dream about podiums like in in, in racing and 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 but then you have the nations and that's something else like it's the Olympic Games of motocross I say and yeah it's it was a nice nice feeling. Well, your first podium in uh, World Championship came in 2009, Faenza, the first round of the championship in yeah. the mud. How big a deal was that? I know it was only one race because yeah. of the conditions, but yeah, you were still on the podium. Yeah. yeah. Like I say, you as a kid, you, you dream of like being a professional racer. Then you want to ride the world championship. Then you want to be on the podium. And then, you know, suddenly that day is there. But then, you know, it's just un, un, undescribable, like how great that feeling is that to finally achieve something that you, you was hoping for to achieve as a kid. And um, it was a special day also because with the one motor race and uh, the rain was coming down and it was a disaster. <laughs> but it was, at, at the end of the day, it didn't matter because the first podium was there and, um, yeah, you just enjoy and you keep going. You, you dream from more, you know, like you say, oh, I achieved the podium. Now let's focus on more podiums. Let's focus on a world title like, like this, you know. And, and like this, it went for my career, like... On and on and on. Well, actually, you said you dreamed for more. Five rounds later, you got more. Yeah. You got your first GP win in Spain. Tell us, what do you remember about that day? And what did it mean to you to be standing on the top step of the podium? Yeah, that was a really special day because um, uh, I didn't know I won the GP. Uh, the last lap, the, the mechanic said to me, you have to pass Nicolas Abin for podium. But in fact, if I passed him, it was for the win because I was on the podium already. So I didn't know. And then uh, after the race, I remember Valentina uh, from KDM. Uh, she said, hey, Jeremy, you won the GP. I said, what? <laughs> you won the GP? <laughs> so it was a non-believable day. And I'm, I'm glad I achieved that because um, it's not something you get on a plate to win a GP. And um, yeah, it's just I, I remember like it was yesterday and... Yeah, it's an awesome 
interesting to see it again. Yeah. <laughs> well, in 2012 was a breakout year for you. You finished third overall in MX2. You picked up nine podiums. Was this perhaps you becoming more of a, a mature rider? Yeah, <clears throat> and also like um, getting in the factory teams, you know, like uh, it's... Uh, you know, it's a big, big difference. Like, maybe the day of today is, is less, I don't know. But, like, back in the days, the, like, the satellite teams and the factory teams was a huge difference. Like, as soon as I stepped on a factory bike, you gain so much more speed and yeah. confidence. And, and you was, like, in security with the suspensions. And just that made me like feel relaxed and then more mature and to to enjoy it more and and to be safe and and that's why you know it was clicking you 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 go on the podium like more often and so this is especially i think something to do with the factory bike mm -hmm. yeah 2013 your first year in mxgp a difficult first season in mxgp i know you started the year with a hand yeah. injury as well yeah. um how tough was it for you to go through that yeah, you know, uh, it was difficult because it was just two weeks before uh, the first race in Qatar and I broke my finger. But I went there and, you know, I was struggling and like, you know, the, the expectations were big because I was the upcoming, yeah, rookie. <laughs> um, and, you know, the guys from Kawasaki we said, hey, take it easy, we have time, grow and, and, and just take it step by step and it's your first season, so just enjoy and then at the end of the season, uh, I was, uh, like, uh, pretty good. I did some, some top fives and um, some, uh, yeah, some, some podium, uh, but on, on uh, just a race, not overall. So, yeah, it was, was just good. And then uh, came the, the Yamaha deal. So mm -hmm. then I was, like, a happy kid because, like I say, oh, I didn't mess, mess up. Like, mm -hmm. it's, I'm going forward. So then, um, end oh, of the yeah. year though, um, yeah. you made up for all the the problems that you had in in the in the start of the season. Yeah, you win the motocross of nations in Germany, um, standing on the top step for Belgium. Big big day, and yeah. back on a 250 as well. That was the, one of the best days of my career. <laughs> <laughs> it's it was unbelievable uh, being a part of the of the team again and going back to 250 like just swapping to 450 then going back to 250 was like not really easy but um i had an awesome day and uh we won with the team uh and and like i say also this is a dream of of like a young kid like you want to raise the nations but after you want to win the nations so and i all did it so that's why i'm part of my career like um you know i achieved not everything i wanted but most of it well, in 2014, you switched to Yamaha, as you mentioned, and it turned out to be your best year ever. Second yeah. overall, 11 podiums in a row, yeah. uh, 12 in total for the season, including yeah. an amazing win in Czech Republic. I mean, this was a dream year for you, yeah. surely. Yeah, this, uh, yeah, it's stepping up the second year in MX, uh, MX1 and... All those podiums that I had, the, my second win of my career, I only got two though in in, MX, uh, in World Championship, but um, this one was a special one because it was like a three-way battle with uh, Caroli and uh, Strybos and uh, again another dream of a young kid and um, yeah, it's just unbelievable and it's nice to see it again. Um, I've, I've seen it many times, but like it gives me goose, goosebumps when I see it and um, Sometimes I wish I could go back to those feelings, but uh, yeah, that's just life. <laughs> yeah. Not across the nation. Yeah, go on. You talk. No, no, it's uh, just uh, nice to see and uh, all the fans back in the days and uh, yeah, it was was w living on a dream, like on a on a on a sky in the sky, and and it's crazy. It's crazy to see it and yeah. We've got the motocross nations coming up uh, at the end of the uh, at the end of September. You've had 11 appearances so far. You've won eight mod uh, medals, one win uh, included. We saw that a minute ago. Uh, this will be your final appearance for Team yep. Belgium uh, this season at uh, at Redbud, and it's kind of fitting, really, because you're going there at the place where it all started, where you got your first podium, and you're going to round out your career for Team Belgium there. How are you feeling about going back? Yeah, it's uh, it's awesome, and I'm I'm proud to be part again of the team, and uh, especially after s many many times. And um, I think it will be an emotional day because you know 
I feel okay because I, I am in peace with retiring and I'm, I'm focused on what is still coming. But, you know, that will be the final day and, and, and I think it will be an emotional day. And um, But, uh, yeah, I, w I hope we can be on the podium for one time maybe, like for the last two years. <laughs> and uh, that would be like uh, the perfect scenario about my career. And even though I didn't got world champion, it's been a hell of a career. And... Um, I'm really proud of what, I, what I've achieved. And, um, yeah, the Motocross of Nations is definitely a big day in my, yeah. my agenda. <laughs> okay. Well, look, before we go, just uh, give you a quick opportunity just to uh, maybe say thank you to uh, one or two people. Okay. Use this camera here if you want. Okay. Hi, everyone. Yeah, you know, I just want to say a big thanks to everyone who supported me during my career, like uh, especially my uh, parents, uh, yeah, they are really important. And my friends, all the teams and like uh, all the mechanics, friends around uh, the paddock, uh, thank you for uh, helping me during my career and uh, making me uh, push the best in me. And um, let's hope uh, we can meet again after, uh, after uh, my career and um, just uh, everybody stay safe and uh, enjoy life. All Benita. right. Well, look, uh, Jeremy, thanks for joining us. All the best uh, on what happens in the future, and congratulations on a fantastic Thank career. You. Ten world championship medals in total. Uh, Not you know, so bad. Eight with the nations and, and two in MX2 and MXGP. But yeah. we are out of time. But coming up on MXGP TV, a little later on, we're back at 2.40 with our first race of the day, EMX Open. You can see the schedule there. Um, but, uh, Jeremy, thanks for joining us. Thank All the best this weekend. Me. Thank and, you. And uh, I'm sure we'll see you around. Yeah, for sure. And we are out of time. Uh, Lisa and I will be back in France next week when we do it all again. So see us right here in the studio when we return to Saint-Jean d'Angelais. See you then. Bye for now.